In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new Google group. So to open Google groups while in apps, just go to groups.google.com slash a slash your domain.com or your domain administrator may have created a shortcut such as groups.yourdomain.com. But this one here will always work, groups.google.com slash a slash your domain.com. If you're a member of any groups, you'll see those groups listed here on the left. To create a new group, select the create a group button. And step one, we'll set up our group. I'm going to create a group for the training team. So I'm gonna call this training team. And Google by default will create an email address. So this will be training-team at datoLLC.com. You can change the email address if you want. Maybe I'll call this training team 09 or just training team. And then a group web address is created as well that has the same name as the email address. So to quickly get to this group, I could go to groups.google.com slash a datoLLC.com slash group training hyphen team. You're going to want to create a group description and this lets people who are added as members to your group understand what the group's about. And now this is where you choose your access level and this is an important part. If you make this a public group, that, that means anyone on your domain can join or post a message or view the member list and read the archives. So this is good for something like maybe um, a recreation group where you don't really need that much control. Anyone who wants to join, maybe the bowling group can join. A team group is where the manager of the group it can invite new members, but anybody can post messages or view the member list and read the archives. So I'm going to actually create this as a team group because this actually is a training team. Announcement only, this means that only the managers of the group can post messages and view the member list, but anyone can read the archives. So this may be useful for a company announcement list or maybe an HR announcement list. You wouldn't want just anyone in the organization to be able to post announcements, but you do want anyone to be able to read the announcements. Restricted means that um, this group is a, a private group. The When people search groups, the posts do not appear in search results and only people who are members can read the archives. Now with the team and announcement group, anyone on the domain can read the archives. And this is useful because I may have some information in my team group that I do want other people in my organization to have access to. So again, the, the least level of control is the public group. It's the most open and the most restricted group is the restricted group. If you're not sure, you should go on the safe side and probably make the group restricted until you understand more about Google Groups and then you can open it up later. So I'll click create my group and this is going to take me to step two. So now I can add members. So I can enter email addresses of people on my domain that I want to add as a member. So I'll start to type names and names in my contact list will appear. I'm going to add Jim and Matt and Leah. And I can write an invitation message, welcome to the training group, use this email address to send out messages to our team. It's just a message to let people know why they're being added and how they can use the group. So right now I'm in the invite members by email mode. So when I click invite members, they'll get an invitation letting them know they've been invited to the group and they'll have to click on a confirmation link to confirm their membership. The other way to add members is to just add them directly. So they will be directly added to the group. They don't need to confirm membership. To do that, I go to my group homepage. And now I can go to invite members. So instead of invite members by email, I'll add members directly. So I'm going to actually add Leah and Rick directly because they're part of the training team. They will still receive a message letting them know that they've been added to the group. So I have this box checked letting them know they've been added. 
And then I can decide what their email subscription will be like. Do are they going to receive emails when a new message is posted or do they only see the messages by logging into the group or send email for each message and update or one summary email in a day so they'll get a summary of all the new messages or one email with all the activity in it. So that would include activity like a new person joined the group or someone posted a file, that type of activity. Right now I'll just choose send email for each message and update. I'll click add members. These members can come in now and change their own communication settings if they'd like. So now when I go to um, members in my group, I see those members that I added directly. As those members who I've sent an invitation accept the invitation, they'll be listed here as well. And I can see their name, their email address, the type of member they are, either member or owner, and when they joined the group. Okay, so that's how you create a new group and then add members either directly or by invitation. And we're going to be doing some more videos showing you how to use groups for sending messages, how to change your group settings, how to edit your own membership, and what rights you have as an owner and what rights you have as a member. So now you know how to create a group and add members.